Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? <laughs> I resemble that remark. Uh, obviously, we've got an absence here. They are up in Dallas Fort Worth area at a baby gender reveal. So, it was pink. Little girl. What? The baby's pink. It was when it was born. Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> Morgan. So, anyway, so they, they're still. I, I'm, don't know if they're on their way home now or whatever, but that's where they were. So y'all are stuck with me this morning. And that may or may not be a good thing. So, um, prayer request. What was that? That was the gender reveal. That was the reveal. Oh, did, oh, just showing the picture. It was a it was a costume party gender reveal. So everybody everybody was in costume some a little weird. weirder than others but anyway uh, prayer request I've got one handed to me this morning for a Joshua Cumbie so, uh, gentleman was 42 years old was killed in a motorcycle accident uh, just remember the family mother Kathy Moss and father Steve Cumbie and his brother Jonathan um, don't know any details other than the, the details was he was killed in a motorcycle accident. So. What was his name? <clears throat> Joshua Cumby. So keep keep his family in your prayers. Uh, anybody got anything new? Debbie Houston was admitted in the MDA last night. She was running high fever and she had they got results last night that she has no money. Anybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Joyce, Joyce had a stroke last week. And she went in the hospital, came home Wednesday, uh, took her back Thursday. And she, they kept her over the weekend. They're going to send her to rehab when she gets out. And she, she's not had to count because they got a monitor on the bed. Oh. She can't get out without setting <laughs> so she's hostage. She's at uh, Memorial uh, Methodist Clear Lake. And, uh, and she, yesterday, Rachel and I went up there, and they, had, they had let her get up and sit in the chair for about an hour. That bed was getting you know, oh, yeah. uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> put a little pad in that chair and covered it up with a towel. And we went in there, and Drake sat down in that chair. When he got up, it set that alarm off. I could get him <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, well. Danny? Yeah, I'm going to ask a favor from everybody. Uh, I've had things in the past that I've asked prayer for, but this is different. And I, I'm going to ask y'all if y'all pray. Pray for me and my family. We're going through something, and I'm not going to go into a bunch of details and stuff, but this is real, real, real important and very serious and to our whole family. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about it is that we really, really want y'all to pray for us. Just keep us in your prayers and you can start at any time. It's just, it's just, it's just something. Thank you. Okay. Our daughter-in-law had to have brain surgery yesterday, more or less. 
she had a uh, bleeding vessel, blood vessel in her brain. So they had to go in and do a, they call it a, what should we do? Let's see. And, and beyond it. Angiogram. Angiogram. Duh, I'll spit it out. Um, that was very successful. Took them half a day. But, uh, then this morning, Robert texted us that they're going to do a spinal tap to remove more fluid in the brain. So if that works, then they'll put a port to control the drainage or whatever. I'm not sure how. Keeping works. the pressure off. Yeah. Okay. Anybody mm -hmm. else? Linda Pullett, she's had the stomach virus since Thursday. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, unless you're still scheduled for surgery, where's Les? He was here. He did hospital. No, he was here. <laughs> he disappeared. He, he went early. Yeah, okay. And I was just here. Um. Our, uh, our election coming up, and uh, all those people. In <clears throat> yes, everybody goes home. Yeah. Early vote was on Monday. Hurricane. said something last week about the mother-in-law. We finally made contact with her Friday. Okay. So Kim and her sisters were thrilled to death to be able to do that. Tony, would you pray for us? We thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day, Lord Jesus. We're here in your house, Lord, and we are so thankful that we can pray to you to bring our petitions to you, Lord, this morning. There is numerous people on the list for healing and for other needs, Lord Jesus. We need you to intervene and uh, we pray for your will to be done in each and every one of these uh, situations, Lord Jesus. Be with the families and comfort them. Touch them, Lord Jesus. I know we don't always understand your answers to prayer, but they're always sure. We ask you uh, to touch the speakers, the teachers, and uh, any volunteers this morning, Lord Jesus. We ask you... To in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Well, this this lesson this week, I struggled with it a little bit until I finally read what the caption of the lesson was, duh. If you read it first, purpose exemplified. Exemplified is making an example of or using it as an example. And it's it's out of Philippians. It's, it's Paul writing to the believers in, in Philippi, to the church that he planted and started. And uh, as we read the verses, you'll, you'll, you'll hear how Paul feels about this church in Philippi. Uh, the lesson started off with a question, and it says, what's the closest you've come to creating a masterpiece? I don't know about y'all, but I haven't been very close at all to creating a masterpiece. Of anything. The only masterpiece I've got, I guess, is be the kids. Mm -hmm. But God's masterpiece is us. We're 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 a work works in progress. It's a masterpiece still ongoing. And Paul Paul makes an example of Philip an example of the church in Philippi to to get well to give us an example so well first and foremost did everybody notice the messages this morning there's no evening services today 
That's the big one that's up there. But it says it is, but we're not meeting today. We are not meeting today. Right. What does it say? The prayer groups meet at 5 on Sundays. Oh, okay. Well, we're not meeting today. Right. <laughs> well, they sent it. They sent it out with a great big X on it after it had already been sent out. So <laughs> we're not meeting today. All right, Alan, can you read those? Uh, let me know I can. Oh, <laughs> oh you wipe your glasses? Uh, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Like I say, Paul, Paul planted the church in Philippi. The church in Philippi was the only church that Paul uh, accepted help from. He was extremely close to this church. And... Uh, One of, the, one of the things that it brought up in verse 1 where it says, Servants of Jesus Christ. Now, if you read very much of Paul, this is pretty much a standard greeting for him when he would go in to the synagogues or wherever to preach. The only difference in this one was he says that him and Timothy are servants of Jesus Christ. Normally, Paul says apostles of Jesus Christ. And it's almost like He's having to convince whoever he is speaking to that he is an apostle. And what was an apostle? A servant. Yes. servant that trained under who? Jesus. Under Jesus. So, but for the church at Philippi, he doesn't say that. He says, servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is how close he feels to them. He thanked God for their partnership in the gospel, and he's filled with joy every time he thinks about the Philippian church and about the, 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 the uh, people there. And what he's wanting to do is make sure that they continue with what they've got going on. They've got a good thing going on. Now, Paul says he remembers in, in verse thing, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. Was everything always peaches and cream for Paul and Philippi? No, it wasn't. Beat, put in jail, reminded him who he was. So, not all, not every everything he had happened to him in Philippi was good. But what's his attitude towards it? This is y'all's part. Y'all gonna have to help me today. What's his remembrance of the people? And everything he remembers about them is always good. They have, remember the, the title of the lesson, exemplified. He's given us an example. We have an example here of what a church should be. A very good example, as a matter of fact. His previous work with the Philippians gave him an assurance about their future. He felt that their future was good because they were steady in the Word. They were steady... Uh, sending help to other churches. They were sending help to Paul. They were doing all the things they were supposed to be doing. And doing them, not only just doing them, it's not just all about the works, it's doing them with the right heart. They're not giving begrudgingly. They're giving out of the generosity of their heart. What are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be doing the same thing. Um, Another thing that was pointed out in one of the commentaries I read was he says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And I never noticed this before. But everywhere he does that, grace is always mentioned first and peace is always mentioned second. You have to have God's grace in order to have the peace that God gives you. 
So it's always mentioned first. The word, oh, and I, I lost it. I've got it written somewhere. Oh, charis is, is the, the Hebrew word for, for grace. Peace is shalom. And I never thought about this either, but the name of the city, Jerusalem, is Jeru City Shalom. City of Peace. It hasn't been a city of peace yet. But one day when the Lord comes back, it will be a city of peace. It will be His new kingdom here on earth. Philippi, like I said, they, they continue to support Paul with all with gifts to him, supporting him through through uh, gifts of what is in Thessalonia when he was in jail in Rome. They they were constantly sending him some kind of support, whether it's just a letter or whatever, keeping him built up. And he's remembering them for all that. Y'all are awful quiet this morning. Y'all normally generate a whole lot more conversation than this. You're, you're making it tough on me, and we're going to get out of here real early. <laughs> Philippians is known as the book of joy. Joy and rejoicing are mentioned throughout this book more than anything else. Yeah. And it has to do with the people. He's speaking to the people, and he's speaking from his heart about how he feels about them. And that's a real big deal. And, and it's something that I brought up before. When you think about uh, joy, the world always talks about happy, happiness. Uh, in the Constitution, it, uh, it allows for us to seek out you know, happiness. Happiness is a linear thing. It's, you seek to achieve it. You do what it takes to make yourself happy. And that happiness goes along until something ends it. Till, till somebody shows up, till something happens, and it ends just as quickly as it started. But joy, that's a vertical. Joy is horizontal. Mm -hmm. It's between, as long as you keep your relationship in the right way with God, it continues on, and nothing stops it. Only you can stop it. And it's, it's a totally different thing. And I truly believe with my heart, my whole heart, by talking to people, that there are Christians outside of their initial experience with God have, has never experienced joy. Mm -hmm. And what he said about grace and peace, there is a third one, and that's joy. You have to understand and experience the, the grace of God. And then once you dwell in that and you do what God asks of you, you experience that peace. And once you experience that peace and you learn to live within God's peace, you will experience that joy. And I've, tr and I've met people, and when you try to tell them the difference between peace and happiness, and you try to explain to them about this joy you have, they don't understand. They, no. And you can spot them. All you got to do is try to tell them about the joy you feel. And when, when they, they get this look in their eyes, you know they haven't experienced it. You can tell. Well, think about where Paul is. Where's Paul when he's writing this? He's in prison. And if you've ever seen pictures of the supposed prison that Paul was kept in, it was not something, certainly not a place you ever wanted to be. They're holding the ground. It's not, basically it's all it is is just a hole in the ground. So, so Paul's in prison right now, and he's still joyful. Regardless of what's happening in your life as a believer, as a believer, there is always a positive insight in the end. There's always a positive in the end. Heaven forbid he takes you, but when he takes you, that's a positive. You're going to be a whole lot better off. This whole lesson this week 
is an example of how we're supposed to react to life. Life is life. You're going to have the ups and you're going to have the downs. But as long as you hang on to what you've got in the Lord, there's always an upside. There's always an upside. We don't always understand why we're going through what we're going through. But as you get more like-minded with Christ, you start wanting the same things He wants, and the things that you may be going through right now may not be as bad as you're making it out to be. You know, like the verse that says, um, if he'll give you the desires of your heart, a lot of people think, well, whatever our desires are giving, you know, it's, if your heart is with his heart, your desire will be his desire. Right. It will be the same. And he's going to give you those desires if you let them. We may or may not get a recording of this. They used the camera at the men's deal this week and they didn't charge it before they brought it back to me. So. But you can't, you can't just continue to fall back on things you've done in the past that are right. You know, it, it's a good thing. You, you did a good thing in the past. But what, what's, what is the process that we're going through right now as believers? Sanctification. We're working towards sanctification. Are we going to get there? Not till the day he comes back or the day we go. 
Are we supposed to stop striving for that? No. And that's where, and I, I got to admit, I've done it. You, 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 you go and you go and you go and you, and you, something happens. Like Danny said, something, all of a sudden, you, you know, you go, you're going along real good and something happens and you sit back and go, why? What, what did I do? What am I doing? Yada, yada, yada. Oh, woe is me. Everything's so terrible. I know I'm not the only one that's done that. It's you're human. You're going to go through that. But what are you supposed to do in those times? Well, first and foremost, you you rely on what your brothers and sisters in Christ to back you up, support you, to lift you back up again. What else are you supposed to do? You're supposed to get in this. It don't matter what you're going through. There's an answer for it in here. That answer may just be, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> um, you know, it may be that. It may not be the answer that you want. And a lot of times, that's the problem. We're looking for an answer that we want. I, I want to see this. I want to do this. I want to have this, whatever. You wanting this, doing this, or having this may not be the best thing for you whether you know it or not, and who knows better than we do? The Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't tempt us. He allows you to be tempted. He allows you to go through things, and what's he doing when he's letting you go through things? Huh? Well, hopefully you are. If you don't, what's going to happen? You're going to go through it again in some form or fashion. Yeah? That's what we asked the Lord about, that is, that was what he talked about when we are our word in the wilderness. Uh, when you're going through a wilderness, instead of trying to find, get your way out of it, look to the word, look to what God has for you in the wilderness. What's God's word in the wilderness? Because the Jewish culture, when they're in the wilderness, they don't, they don't just crawl to get out of it like we do, like, you know, woe is me and let me crawl on it.
experience the first time, you don't forget it. You forget, I don't forget the first time I was comforted by him after I became a Christian. I mean, I'll never forget it. And you build on that one step at a time. And I guess that's why he made us get, instead of my thing is, why couldn't we be born old and get younger? <laughs> you know? it's, it's, a, it's better the way it is. If you, you think about where Paul's coming from from here, if you've, if you've ever assisted somebody in coming to the Lord and you see that person really take hold and take root and start working on it, what does it do? What does it make you feel like? Rejoicing. It's, you're rejoicing. I mean, there's joy in that, right? And that's what Paul's experiencing here, and that's what he's conveying to them is his joy in them that they're doing what he asked them to do and it well it's and I don't know it's not what he asked them to do he's not asking them he's asking them to follow what Christ wants us to do um And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgments, sanctification. That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Paul prayed that they would continue to grow in their Christ-likeness. You've it's, it's a process. It's, we keep saying this. It's a process. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. In what ways does our ongoing spiritual growth glorify the Lord? If our constantly growing, if we're constantly growing and we're constantly striving to become more Christ-like, how does that glorify God? It's your part. Said the greatest compliment I've ever been paid as a Christian is <coughs> someone told me, I see Jesus in you. Mm -hmm. so. That's got to make God feel good. <laughs> that has got to make God feel good. It's, it's. Sort of like seeing one of your children <laughs> do something like that and you just, you know. I had my, my grandson, and this made me proud as punch, and, and for no reason it came out of nowhere, and I've told you all the story. He sat down beside me and was playing his game and just rubbing my arm and said, Papa, you know what? I said, what? He said, I love Jesus more than money. <laughs> I, got, I got no idea where it came from, but my heart was pierced. <laughs> and, you know, because it just, man, it just makes you feel good. Think about what it makes him feel like when a, a room of believers, a church full of believers, a state full of believers glorify him. What are we put here for? To glorify God. To glorify God. How do we glorify God? By getting in this, by bringing others to him, by leading by example, there's so many different ways to bring glory to him. Living the way he wants you to live, doing the things he wants you Obedience. to do. Obedience. Obedience. <clears throat> Is it easy? No, it's not easy. Think about the apostles. Think about what they went through. Think about what they stood up to. We don't have that problem here. We may get razzed. We may somebody, some people may turn their nose up at us and walk away. That's going to happen. That's okay. Did you plant the seed? You plant the seed, and then who? Then whose job is it? The Holy Ghost. Once you plant that seed and put that put that thought in there, then it's the ministry, not job. I've been chastised for that before. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to take that seed and work on it. Can I see somebody's heart? No. 
Can I save somebody's heart? No. Can I give them the word to lead them to the, to the person that can do that? Yes. yes. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what the church at Philippi is doing right now. And that's why he's so proud of them. And that's why it's, that's why it's there for us to read. And it's an example of what we're supposed to be doing. They haven't slowed down. They're still going strong doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, continuing the process of sanctification. Yeah, does your walk walk match your talk talk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor said he closed his sermon once. He said, when you leave, be a good witness for Jesus, and if necessary, use words. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a true statement. It's such a true statement because your actions speak much louder than your words do. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just. Always watch it. Yeah. And you don't know who it is. Yeah. But you know, my Brother Bill always says, go be Jesus to somebody. Yeah. You know, go be Jesus to somebody today. When you run up on that issue, that problem that you don't know how to handle, then ask you another question. WWJD. What would Jesus do? If you can ask yourself what would Jesus do and answer it honestly, there's your, there's your answer. Once again, it's not going to be easy sometimes, but that's your answer. All right? All right, let's close it out in prayer. Father God, thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come in and, and sit down with this group and study your word, learn more about it, and come to know you better, Lord. Father, I just ask that we take what we've, what we've picked up on here today and we take it out and and we go out and be Jesus to somebody. We go out and spread the word and, and continue our process the way the good Lord wants us to. Father, I ask you to be with the preacher today as he delivers your word. Give him the words to speak. Open up the hearts and minds of those that are in the audience. And Lord, if there's somebody here that don't know you, let the preacher speak something that touches their heart and brings them down to the, down to the altar. Father, go with us as we go on. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.